Hey guys, Lancey here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining me while we're looking to the weekly MTG market and also the stock market. Sorry, I haven't been here for a couple of days. A lot has actually happened. Let's get right to it. So looking at the revised dual lands, just as a good start, uh, nothing crazy. Things have been very stagnant for the last couple of weeks, pretty much. And I feel like tomorrow's Federal Reserve meeting might be a big one to watch. But outside of that, there really hasn't been too many changes. Moving on to Badlands. That was Underground Sea, Badlands. Nothing much. Plateau, no difference. Savannah looks like it's creeping up. Now, Tiger was really interesting. It's right now peaking around about $380. I noticed about three days ago, and I didn't buy them, there was three lightly played copies on here for $280. Now, I should have bought them. I really should have recorded it. Uh, but, you know, if any of you guys picked it up, good for you, because I noticed them, I saw them with my own eyes, that they were $100 cheaper than what it's showing right here for it lightly played. It almost reminded me that, oh my god, did prices fall or something? And then I went and checked. Nope, not really. So, very unusual. As for the rest of the market movers for the day, Viridian Rebel from Skars and Mirrodin, Actually a really cool card, not one that was on many people's hit list, but seems to be picking up now. Very uh, good against artifact hate decks. Green is pretty good at that. Removing artifacts means that you get... Oh, when an artifact is put into the graveyard, into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. So this would really annoy me. And this would have actually... This is actually still an amazingly good card. Uh, let me just check. I mean, I can't just instantly buy these. Uh, because I don't live in the US. But a heavily played for 40 cents is probably still worth it if you can get it for 40 cents because there are a lot of artifact shenanigans happening at all times. And this card is just good in a green deck. You might draw more than what you expect with a card like this. If anything, the only biggest problem is that it doesn't say, oh, it does say May. So yeah, this is actually an amazing card. Moving over to. Oh, sorry, that's uh, the thing. Nature's Cloak from Starter 1999. We've noticed a couple of the Starter 1990 cards, uh, 1999 cards moving around, mostly because they are just old, similar to like the Legends and things like that. This is obviously nowhere near the Legends status, but people are picking it up because it's just an old card that has not got many printings. You can see there's a Portal one that's worth $16. So if you can get this for $4 or $3.50, then why not? Soldevi Golem. Now this has gone absolutely parabolic. You can see that it was two dollars twenty for the longest time, slowly gaining up to three dollars thirty-four for the market price. But the average price is now sitting at sixteen dollars. Uh, on the reserve list from my sage, really up to you guys to decide on what that is worth. Reckless one from Dual Decks Anthology, three colors, one red for a goblin avatar. Amount of goblins on the battlefield, not yours, not opponents, just everyone's all together by the looks of it. So pretty fun, I guess, but nothing too crazy. It's got haste, but yeah, you can probably top end it on a goblin deck. It seems to be spiking all over the place. One dollar seventeen to now sitting at one dollar seventy one. Now moving on straight over to the weekly market movers. Now we can see that the daily we have a seeker's chariot, we got rock four. Bale moving up 16%, Faithful ab ab Absence. But these are all new cards from the uh, Innistrad set, so we'll skip over a lot of these. For standard, it's going to be very much a very highly moving market because of the new set. So looking at the weekly, we have Demi Leech from Forgotten Realms moving up by 79%. We got, nope, Asika's Chariot moving up, moving up by 31%, and I set it at $3.69. And everything else is literally just in a stride. Moving to Pioneer, we've got a 24% gain for a werewolf. Surprise, surprise. Gay Reach Bandit moved up by 24% today, which is now set at $5.90. 9% gain for Crypt Breaker, obviously zombies, so makes sense. Biggest drops, we've got Polyraptor now sit, dropping by 6% to now set at $15.11. Really nothing too much to talk about there. Weekly change, you got Relentless Dead, 52% gain. Scarab God, 18% gain. Gaia, Reach Bandit, Werewolf, 95% gain. Arclight Phoenix, 29% gain. Tenacity, 10 dollars 93 
and Cruel Reality, a 33% gain as a curse card, which is something that has also gotten a bit of uh, spotlight on it. And Crypt Breaker, 16% gain for the week. The biggest drop, the biggest one is 9% drop for Cigarda's Aid, 7% gold uh, drop for Morgus God of Slaughter, but that's about it. Moving over to Modern, we got Obora, Palace in the Clouds, insanely sitting at $87, a 9% gain for the day. Graven Cans may go, moving up by 14% and I said at 1390. And Leech Lord of Unix. Zombie. Okay. 9% gain to NASA at $17. Biggest drops. Topo Orb. 19% drop. Sway of the Stars. 90% drop. But that one had a huge 3000% gain. So 9%, 19% is not as much as you'd think for a, of a weekly change. Uh, Grave Call. Gravecrawler at 12% drop. It did spike quite a bit, so now it makes sense pulling back. Crime and Punishment, 9% drop. This is one expensive card. $15. Now, weekly change. Sway of the Stars is a spotlight. 3,042%. That's crazy. Savage Beating still gaining 43% and asset at $43.99. I need to keep show, make sure that my copy of mine, uh, that one is actually nice and healthy. I think it's in a... What deck did I put it in? I don't even remember. Spellbinder, 165% gain to an asset at $16. Gravecrawler, 49% gain. World of Fire, 22% gain to an asset at $20. Huntmaster of the Fell, still very comfortably sitting at $30. And Fury of the Horde, $6.49, a gain of $73. The biggest drops, you got Elvish Champion dropping down by 11%, but that is still a crazy $28.37. But that's 10th edition, maybe they're all the same, I haven't checked. A Chroma's Memorial, a 10% drop. And Pillar of Peroons, a 10% drop, uh, 11% drop as well. Moving over to the Vintage Marketplace, really nothing moving. It's what, what, One thing I wanted to cover was there's really not nothing moving. You got a 26% drop from an unlimited contract from below. But that's about the biggest mover that you can see here. Moving over to the stocks now, like I said before, I will split this up from the other series just in case no one gets it or they just want to see this update first so what has happened uh okay so we had a bit of a fake out um i will say this is a tricky one to catch because you can see that no matter what you would have expected the momentum to shift around about here if you were going to get ahead of the game because normally what you do is my buy indicator comes on just after the it breaks the nine but for crypto it's actually very hard to believe that what you normally want to do is follow the macd but the macd would have been very hard to keep track of you can see that it broke down to the downside and the orange bar is above it so pretty much from here on you should not have been buying i guess but at this point right here it does flip which means that it almost looks like it's about to become positive and it actually breaks the downward channel for my RSI as well. So you would be very surprised when it drops all the way through the roof. Uh, sorry, through the floor. I think this is a very good catch for the bears. It really would have trapped a few different people up in this area. Uh, I think the next trap would have been here. But really, the best play for this right now is... The fact that it is sitting on a resistance of about 40,000 and a lot of the stock markets and everything else is meant to or at least have a chance of bouncing back in the last in the next one to two days until Thursday afternoon or Friday morning for you guys when the Federal Reserve talks to either talk about tapering or to not not want to taper. Now, if the Federal Reserve tapers, you will see more of this. This is just Bitcoin, but you will see the dollar rally. So it'll break above this head and shoulders. It'll break above this 93.50, uh, 500, uh, 93.5. The dollar will break about 93.5. Uh, gold will sell off. Bitcoin should sell off. Uh, crypto in general should sell off. Stocks should sell off. Uh, Tesla should sell off. Australian dollar should fall, euro should fall, everything should fall, uh, US oil probably should fall, silver obviously, copper, but a lot of people are anticipating, or at least there's a bit of a confusion, 
if the Federal Reserve is going to taper. Now, the next thing is obviously this Evergrande, whatever Chinese thing, which the Chinese government doesn't look like it wants to bail out. But even if the Chinese government doesn't bail it out, the amount of carnage it's going to cause is probably going to be limited because the Chinese government can only take so much pain. So a lot of people aren't probably shouldn't be focusing on that one. The biggest one is the Federal Reserve. If the Federal Reserve decides to taper because they think the economy is nice and strong, it probably is going to fall a bit, quite a bit, probably more than 10%. And if they decide to, hey, things are not looking good, we need to support the market some more, the market's just going to take off straight back where it is. So it's in a bit of a holding pattern right now. And that's pretty much what I wanted to say. If you have anything in this market, I'd be very careful about what happens on Friday morning, I guess. Uh, check when the Federal Reserve has to do their talking. Anyways, moving on to the DXY. We'll have a look at the technicals other than the fundamentals. Very strong. Now, if the dollar index breaks below, so you can see very clearly that we're forming a head and shoulder. So we got shoulder, head, shoulder. We actually formed a mini head and shoulders inside this. You got a head, uh, sorry, shoulder, head, shoulder, drop. Now, what happens is when it's it's a, psycho, a psychological thing, pretty much people buy in, then they sell when they think they got to the top, then other people that come in, then they sell, and then the people that missed out come in, but then the people that got in at the top here decide to get out before other people dump, and it's like a psychological head and shoulders. Like head and shoulders is a very psychological pattern, and it repeats because it's not something that people can avoid. Uh, it just catches people out because it's the time when the second the second chance for people to escape. So what it is, is you're seeing a head, a shoulder, and a head, and the shoulder is right here formed. You can see that the peak is about the same height as what it was before, 93.2, and it's kind of just flatlining at that. Now, if the Federal Reserve comes up tomorrow and says they're not going to taper, it should jump up past 93.5 and stabilize itself, itself up there. If they say, nope, it's going to fall down here, and then it's going to probably try to break 92, and once it does that, it's going to test the 200, and then if it has some resistance, it might continue bouncing around there, but that's the only chance that the dollar has if the, go if the Federal Reserve decides to taper. Bitcoin, same thing, it's the exact opposite of the dollar. The best chance for Bitcoin is if the Federal Reserve says, no, we can't taper, we're going to pump more money into the economy. Gold, same thing, it is under this 200, the gold is looking so weak. Uh, Peter Schiff has got a lot of talking to do, but I'm sure that he's just going to beat down on Bitcoin as well. But I personally like either one of these better than the dollar. Uh, but that, like I said, it doesn't matter what we think, it de depends on what people want. And right now, a lot of the world wants DXY. Uh, moving on to the VIX, very strong showing, still above its 200-day uh, moving average, below all, above all of its moving averages. Now, the last time that happened to this kind of showing was over here, and it went all the way up to 41 by the time it settled down. Now, I don't think we're going to get up to 41, but if it breaks above 30 without ever dropping below 20, that's pretty impressive for the VIX, and that's scary. You, you don't want to be heavily invested in this market when the VIX is above 20 nowadays. Um, I'd be worried. Moving down to ARK KK. Um, looks bad. Uh, it's below the 200-day moving average. It doesn't look too good technically. But once again, they are betting on the fact that the Federal Reserve is just going to pump money into, tech, uh, into pretty much technology stocks. And that's what Kathy Woods is betting on. I think that's not a bad idea because obviously the best way to win a economic race right now is to just get better technology than the other company, uh, other governments, other countries. Uh, so certainly governments pumping money into the economy in the hopes that their technology firms are going to get stronger than the other countries' technology firms at the same time as swamping the world with inflation and hoping that the other person breaks under inflation rather than your own uh, country. It's not a bad way to do it, but it's just really messy. And if this is some kind of financial warfare where we're going to be the middle people stuck in the f middle of two countries fighting each other by using their economic policies, it's going to be painful because not a lot of it's going to make much sense. 
anyways i'm gonna leave it at that um like i said i'll split this up into two thanks for watching guys have a good one and see you later